So where we left off, we have a few more things left before we can go ahead and do our adjusted trial balance and then create our financial statements. So here, what has happened here? What does it say that we have to do? Adjust office supply. Okay, so... We, right now, we currently have $80 on hand. So what did we originally buy our office supplies for? Where can we find that information? In our ledger. In our ledger. So let's see what we did, how much office supplies we actually purchased. Let me see. Where's... Um, business supplies. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Assets. Okay. It's 150. So here we have exactly for office supplies, we bought a total of 150 supplies. If we have $80 left on hand, as in someone went to the supply closet, they calculate, they counted and they calculate that we have $80 left. So how much actually did we use? 70. We used $70 worth of supplies. Now, this is where we got to make an adjustment because we no longer have 150. We only have 80. So in this case, what terminology do I, uh, or what kind of account would I need to use to reflect that I've spent or used my items? Expense. Expense, that's Office correct. Supplies. Good. Office supplies expense, all right? So can someone tell me what um, account number that is? 6750. 6750, okay? And then lastly, where am I going to take it right out of? Say it again. Why would I take it out of checking? Am I paying for myself to spend these? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. From office equipment. Exactly. We're going to take it right out of our office supplies because that's the whole point of adjusting your office supplies, right? We no longer have 150. We only have 80. So there you go. And then I'm going to write here. Adjustment, that's all you need to do. There's no other words that can describe it. It's just an adjustment. So here we have, we're going to adjust our supplies. We've utilized $70 worth, and we're going to make an adjustment to our actual um, supplies. So now we're going to go to our ledger, and we're going to go, yes. Is that, is that amount incorrect? Where it says office supplies expense seven ten. Yes, thank you. It should be seventy. It should be seventy. Yeah. I fat fingered that one, that ten. <laughs> All right, and my office supplies account. Thank you. So there you go. So I'm gonna go to my ledger. And I'm going to find my office supplies expense. All right. Amortization should be fairly close by. There you go. Office supplies expense. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note here. And I'm going to write adjustment. General Journal, 
one, two, three. And I'm going to debit my account for $70, making my beginning balance to be also $70. Okay. Then I'm going to go to my assets right here where I left off for office supplies. And I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment. Right. Adjustment. General journal number 23. And I'm going to credit my account for $70. So therefore, what is my total that I should have? 80. 80. Okay. All right. Any questions on office supplies? So obviously when you do business, you're going to get rid of or use or um, spend, okay? And that's what expenses is for. So this right here. I just need that formula. Go ahead. The formula? I just need the formula that you just put in. Okay. So we're going to start on our debit side. We're going to go the previous amount. We're going to add any debits and subtract any credits. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, we need to adjust our inventory and we need to adjust all of these things. Okay. All right. And that's it for this one since there was a very quick one. So next thing is we need to accrue Irene's wages, okay? So she worked a full week, okay? How do I do that? You have to take only two days, right? Well, she worked for a full week, remember? Because we... Um... Yeah, because we paid her on the 28th. We paid her on the 28th, but so... she also accrued for the previous week. Because she worked... Uh, let me see, Sunday. She worked... Um... She gets Monday and Tuesday off, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Today is Friday. She we need to go to the subsidiary ledger. Subsidiary ledger. Okay, here you go. Under payroll. Employees. Okay, so we just paid her on the 28th, right? When did we stop her actual... Um, when do we actually stop her actual, or when did we actually record it? 23rd. The 23rd. So let's go look at our calendar. If she submitted on the 23rd, right, and she works Friday to Tuesday, correct? So she worked the 24th, the 25th. Right, she gets Wednesdays and Thursdays off, and she worked the twenty eighth, and she worked the twenty nine, and the twenty and the thirtieth. So that is five days. Yes. Lynn, I have a question. Mm -hmm. now, we have paid her on twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. So next payment mm -hmm. will be after seven days. No, but uh, uh, next payment will be after 14 days. Yes. So, and so from 28th, mm -hmm. the next payday will be 28th plus 2, 30th, and it will be on the 12th of July. Correct. We are just accruing, meaning we are going to yeah, owe her the money. Accruing is for the uh, ending period or for a future period? Yes. For the future. For the future. 
for the future payment, we're going to owe her because we have to close out all of her expenses. But we are closing this as a 30th of June. Correct. So, uh, what I, I realized was now 30th of June, uh, up to two days, we are accruing, we have to accrue. That is what I thought. Y yes, yes, yes. Uh, because where we reach the end of the period, we need to close our books. So, one of them is going to be entailing an expense, right? Our salaries and yeah. wages expense. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate so then we know how much we actually owe her. So then when we actually pay her, we're going to reduce what we owe her and actually get a full amount of um, her entire amount that she worked. So in this case, we're only accruing for a week because it, we're already on Sunday the 30th. Question. Yes. Does it mean then that it would be more advisable to calculate the payroll every week so when it's the time to make prepare a check, you already more or less have something. All you have to do is add or whatever that's unpaid from your ledger. Yes and no. Now remember, what kind of payroll period are we on? We're not paying her yet. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. But uh, what I'm saying is that it's just a matter of calculating. Just like... Uh, calculating what? Are we calculating her liabilities, her taxes, yeah. or just what she's earned? What she has earned for that particular week. Although it's not a due date yet. It's not, although it's not a pay period still. But mm -hmm. at least we have something ready. Okay, it's only advisable if you potentially close your books every month, meaning then yes, you need to do it. Because if we're doing a bi-weekly, because I'm, I'm not going to change it because remember, if we change it, that means all of our calculations have to also be changed. In this case, I'm just telling the accountant that, hey, we're closing up our books, meaning we can no longer expense, we need to expense all, everything out, and we just need to owe her. Okay? So it will, here, let's, let's go ahead and go through the problem, and it will make more clear sense, okay? So she worked a whole week. She worked Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's a whole five days. Normally, on a regular week period, they're only uh, able to work up to five days. 40 hours. So here, it's not payroll yet, okay? So I'm not gonna place anything in here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to calculate it on the side. If her pay rate is $8.50 and she's uh, so far accumulated one whole week, how much do I actually owe her? Okay, say that again. 850 times 40 is 340. Okay, now what is this still going to be? What, 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 how do I actually, how do I actually, uh, what do you call it? How do I expense? Or what account do I use to expense for her pay? You mentioned salary and wages expense. Correct. You still need to do an expense because it you are preparing that because we're accruing what she's already earned so far. Okay? So salaries and wages expense will be there. However... We're not paying her now. What are we doing? We're paying her later because right now, we she still got a whole week left to accrue and we're going to pay her on the following Friday. So what account will I use to Salaries owe her? And wages payable. Salaries and wages payable. Good.
Now, question to you. Why aren't we doing all these calculations for the taxes and stuff? Because we're just getting a, a, a total. We're not actually paying. Ex that is true. And also because we're only accruing what she's earned so far. Meaning she has the potential to do overtime. She has a potential to do all those extra things. So this right here isn't reflecting of her total paycheck. This is reflecting of what she's earned so far. Okay. And this is what we owe her, right? It's a payable. This is how much we are going to futurely potentially owe. So right now, all we're doing is just making a record because one thing that's different between an expense and a liability is, remember, expenses have to close out. Once we're done with Irene, we're done with Irene. Okay? And what stays open is going to be the potential for whatever amount that she owes. So, for example, when I do actually write her paycheck out, you're going to decrease your salaries and wages payable because you're paying it off. And you're going to also accrue on an, uh, or an additional salaries and wages expense on top of that. Okay? So here, I'm not doing anything to it. I'm just collecting the information so that in the future, I know that so far I still owe Irene potentially $340 before tax, okay? That's all accruing the uh, payroll benefits is for. It's just so then you know that you, at the end of the day, once you close out your expenses, right? Because these, th these are things that we have to pay anyways, right? It's part of our expenses to do business. We need to pay our employees. Okay, so that is what I'm doing here now. Lynn, uh, yes. this 340 calculation, can you just uh, elaborate? Okay, so what it was, was we know that her uh, pay rate is 850. If she worked a full five days, right? Assuming she worked a full eight hours. So okay, five times. Starting, starting from 23rd to 28th, right? That week. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, 20, 20, uh, 23rd all the way to the 30th. Because we're at the end, we're at the end of the period. Okay, so uh, she started working because that is a little uh, confusion to me because uh, she started working on 10th. She, she, so her, 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 her schedule is she works Fridays to Tuesdays. She has Wednesday and Thursday off. Okay. Okay. And she started working on the 14th. She submitted her payroll, right? Because pay week is that week. She missed a week because of, um, or she worked, let me see, she, I think she worked a full two weeks. At that point. So, but uh, in the payroll, we have started beginning date is 10th. Uh... Wait, why did I write 28th of June? I think payroll, pay date was 20. Yeah, 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 28th. I paid her on the 28th. Yeah, we paid her on 28th, but the beginning day, the period begins mm -hmm. was 6, 10, 20, uh, 2020. 23rd, I mean 24th. So let's look at the calendar again because how pay, payroll periods work is it always starts on a Monday and ends on the second Sunday. So calendar. So if Irene started working on the 14th, I believe, right? We hired her, we hired her on the 10 to start on the 14th. Right? Okay. And she only works Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays. She gets Wednesday and Thursday off. Now, normally what happens is, again, the payroll period starts on Monday and it ends on the second Sunday. So in this case, my payroll is scheduled for the 14th and the 28th. That's the days that I pay. What you have to do is you're going to have to accrue 
the days that you worked, and then you get your paycheck. That's how payroll works. It's a long story unless you really want to actually get into it. It's a lot more complicated than what you actually see. But the payroll period ended on the 23rd. We paid her for the dates of the 14th all the way to the 23rd. So that means the new payroll starts on the 24th and it ends on the whatever the next, uh, I believe it's the uh, 8th, the 7th. Okay, so that means her payroll that she has to accrue is going to be the 24th all the way to the very second Sunday. Okay, and because she works Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, because she gets Wednesday and Thursday off, she's worked the 24th, she works the 25th, she worked the 28th, the 29th, and the 30th. Now we, now we understand. Okay, so she worked a full five days, and that's what we're accruing for. Okay. All right, and uh, it should be for $340, All right? And then here, I'm going to go ahead and write... For Irene, um, comma, five days, um, five, or actually do, I just do 40 hours. So there you go. Can you tell me what my accounts are going to be? Okay. 68.10. 24.010. 24.010. So when we actually pay for her in the next period, right, we're still going to do another salary expense, but we're going to also attach the amount that we owe her to get a grand total of my salary expense. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is that's where I do my whole, um, my whole taxes and I write my paycheck after that. So in this case, I'm only going to be expensing for the other half because I owe her the remaining half from the previous month. All right, and that's how this will work in the future. Okay, so we're, we're, uh, we're only accruing or calculating what she has already earned okay there you go good so now we can go to our ledger and fill that information in so operating expenses I believe it's under payroll Here we go, salaries and wages. And then I'm gonna write accrue. Forty hours, okay, general journal. What number is this one? 23, and how much did I accrue it for? 340. Making my grand total of expenses for payroll to be, so you're gonna go up one, you're gonna add your debits and subtract your credits to get a grand total of? 874. Hold on. I wrote the wrong number. It should be 340. 340. Okay. Okay, so she should... Go ahead. What was that? I was just making sure I got it right. Okay. 
So it's 884 in total of salaries and wages expense. Okay. And then, of course, because we owe Irene one week of pay, we're going to go to our um, payroll tax liabilities or payroll li liabilities. And fine, here you go. Salaries and wages payable. All right, same thing here. I'm going to write accrue. Uh, accrue for Irene 40 hours. Okay. General journal number 23, and it's going to be a credit because I owe her for $340. Therefore, my beginning balance is going to be 340. Okay, good. Lastly, let's see what the last thing is. Lastly, we have to accrue for Mr. Albert's um, expense, uh, Albert's commissions expense. So, where do we find his commissions? Subsidiary ledger commissions. Good. Subsidiary ledger under commissions. Okay. So the last thing that we sent out was Super A Market, right, on June 30th, um, invoice number 110. So, so far, right, we have that he collected $53.32 from that. And he has a total accrual of um, $271.78. So this is the amount that we actually owe him since... Um, we don't pay any taxes out of it either. He's commission-based, so that means this is the money that he has earned for the month of June, for the, for the last uh, month before payroll hits, okay? Or the week before payroll hits. So I owe him $271.78. So I'm going to go to my journal. Okay. And what account do I use? Commission expense. Commission expense. And uh, commission uh, payable. Yes, commission expense and commission payable because we're not paying him yet. We're paying him in one more week later. Commission expense and we're paying him later. There we go. For 278.71. Is that right? 71.70. Oh, 71.78. Okay. I mixed up the numbers. 271.78. Okay. Oh, I just. Two seven one seven eight. Okay. All right. And what is what are the account numbers? Sixty eight twenty. Oh, six. Okay, good. And uh, twenty four zero twenty. Okay. Good. Here, I'm going to make a note, accrue for Albert, okay, now last things last, we're going to Go ahead and 
go to our ledger and update our accounts. So operating expenses. Here's commission expense. Same thing, accrue for Albert's commissions. General journal number 23, and we accrued it for 271.78. So same thing, Adina, the formula is gonna be, you're gonna go up one, you're going to add your debits and you're going to subtract your credits. And what do we get? 411.96. 411.96. Good. And then lastly, go to your liabilities because we're not paying him now, we're paying him later. Crew for Albert. Commissions, general journal number 23, and it's going to be a credit for 27178, mm -hmm. making my credit balance the same. Right. So that is all I have left to do. So now my next thing I got to do is do my adjusted trial balance. So as usual, what I do is I do do a, I have a bar right here to indicate that this is my last transaction for the month. I sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy. Okay, I usually fill this in, and I also indicate that my adjustments entries are completed. So that means now I can go ahead and write here and say now I need to complete the adjusted trial balance. Okay, so with that being said, that means my ledger should hold as what it should be. So that's how we're going to utilize and complete our trial, our um, adjusted trial balance now. So here we have a lot of extra accounts that we've, um, we have. What you can do is you can create um, a brand new sheet, all right, with the with and insert all of the extra um, accounts that we've made. But or you could also do this, and this is what I would highly recommend you to do as well. What you can do is, again, you can create another sheet and have a column with every single account on there just to make sure that we balance on that end. Once we've done that, and then I want you to do is I want you to create another column so you can summarize everything up in their main accounts. So, for example, my bank account, right? My bank is the main account. It's going to include checking petty cash and my cash in the register okay and what this is going to do is it's going to make it a lot easier to complete your financial statements because with all this clutter and all this extra accounts it's unnecessary for you to have to report every single detail on your financial statements so that's what i want you to do i want you to go ahead and um, make sure that your trial balance is complete by uh, um, updating all the accounts that are on there and then summarize it up in each main account. So I'll go ahead and do that with you. So let me go ahead and make a copy of this worksheet. So move and make a copy. We're going to make sure we select, we make a copy and I'm going to place it under the adjusted trial balance and click OK. So here it is, my unadjusted trial balance number two. Obviously, I'm going to get the word um, un out and place adjusted trial balance. Where's my B? All right, and I put one right there. Okay, so here's my unadjusted trial balance. Again, 
I have a lot of accounts that I have to manage. So let's go ahead and go for the first one. So what I'm gonna do here is every, every new account I have, I'm gonna insert it. That's the great thing about Excel is you can always add and subtract your um, rows and whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna indicate it in another color. So um, I'm gonna add a new column, okay? In between the debits and I'm gonna add one also in between the credits okay or add one right here okay but in this case I will insert it here all right and at the top I'm also going to write debits and I'm also going to write credits all right so one is going to be a sum of the main accounts and the other is going to be the sum of um, all of your accounts, all right? And how I'm going to indicate it, of course, is going to be with another color. All right, I'm just gonna copy this over just like that. Oh, I'm supposed to actually Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with each column. So the first one I have is my bank. So how much, how much change is in, or how much is in my checking account as of right now? I cannot talk today. How much is in my checking account right now? How much is in my checking account right now? 12578880. All right. And of course my petty cash and my cash in the register should have stayed the same. So what I'm going to do here is in this column here, I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and I'm going to change this color to be another color. I'm gonna change this row to be blue. Actually, well, not the, not the cell, the text. I'm gonna change it to be like a nice dark blue so we can see it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up my sum in my main account because I left it blank. So I'm gonna go ahead and go equal sum. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight the accounts that are underneath my accounts. So I have my checking highlighted, my uh, petty cash, and my cash in the register. So that means in my bank, I should have a total of um, $2,341. Whoa, that's not correct. It should be this, this, and this. So my total, it should be 13,388, yes. Okay. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and go through every single account, insert the accounts that we need, and then also sum each account. So in this case, I have my blue sum for my bank account, my main account, okay? So accounts receivable, what is my change in my account? Do I have, did, did I have a different balance than before? I have 1531.95, so that has stayed the same. However, I have a Contra account, which is for $67.60. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna insert here. I'm also going to indicate that this is the allowance for doubtful accounts. All right, and because I know that this is supposed to be a credit, 
I'm gonna go ahead and indicate it on my, you know, the black side, that it's a credit for the 7660, okay? And that means my actual accounts receivable should be decreased. So it should be 1531 subtract this 7, 7, 7660 because um, a contra account decreases it. So that means my amount should be now 1455.35. All right. So my next account is business supplies. Business supplies. Okay, so did I make any adjustments to my medium? Um, my medium coffee cups and everything else. Yes, we did. All right. So here, business supplies. All right. So what is my total medium cups? Okay. What about my total large cups? To 1670. What about my sugar? And then lastly, what about my creamer? 179.63. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and make a total here for my business supplies. So medium, large, sugar, and creamer is going to be part of my business supplies, which should give me a grand total of $510.10. Okay. Then we move on to office supplies. We made an adjustment to office supplies. So it is no longer $150. It is now $80. And then my next one I have is my inventory. Has inventory changed? Not for my regular coffee or my Supreme coffee, right? Do I still have 180 left? Yes, however, what did we just add in here? We just added our coffee mugs in here. So here, I'm gonna insert it right here for the ceramic coffee mugs. All right? And how much of the ceramic coffee mugs do I have? $386.12, making my total inventory to be Five ten ten. Oh, five ten ten is above. Okay, gotcha. Wrong spot. Trying to look and do this at the same time. Six hundred twenty-eight twenty is what I got. Okay. You got 51010? I got 628820. Lynette, which one are you doing? Are you doing business supplies or are you doing inventory? Okay, I'm sorry. I was adding the business supplies. Yeah, okay. All right, so here. Sorry. That's okay. We'll just move on because uh, Adina confirmed that it is 62820. All right, so now what about furniture? We made a lot of adjustments to furniture. Yes, we did. We did accumulated depreciation. So therefore, this is going to be a doozy. 
All right, so we have the bistro ta tables, right? But we also have an accumulated depreciation for the bistro tables, which credited it, it for 78.63. So that means after every single one, you're going to insert a line um, in here. All right, so this is a, a cube. Tables, a cube depreciation counter. And then we have one more for the shells. Insert. A cube depreciation shells. Okay. Now, what you also can do is you could just do one thing at a time. You could do one whole row at a time, but I figured this is a little easier. Um, so then you don't have to go back and go back and forth, back and forth, back. You know what I mean? You have to go back and do the whole thing again. In this case, we, we already have our sums and totals. Um, and in this case, we want to make sure that we have those, um, you know, these, these blue numbers. Okay. It's whatever makes it easier for you or makes you comfortable. So, um, yes. Anyways, so accumulated depreciation tables. So we know that this is a credit. Right? 78.63. All right, what about my accumulated depreciation for my counter. 14.21. And then the accumulated depreciation for my desk set. 784. And then lastly, my shelves. Six, oh, wrong column, 687. So how you want to do this, it's up to you. I'm not going to do equal sum. What I can do is I know I should have display shelves for 66,000, but I have to decrease it by this. Plus this, minus this, plus this, minus this, plus this, minus this, okay? And what should I get my grand total to be? There's a lot of work. So if you wanted to, you can add up all the columns. So add up all of all of your uh, debits and subtract all your credits. I got $8,926.20. Good. All right, so that's something that, uh, again, you could just add up all your debits and subtract all of your credits. Okay, so in this... Which I was showing you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Which I put all the debit together. Mm -hmm. so, you know, what I'm saying, instead of uh, 
right, left, right, left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's order of operations. It doesn't matter what order you go, especially when it comes to positive, a uh, plus and negative, or add and subtract. It doesn't matter what order you're in. Okay. So in this case, we just added up all of our um, depreciations, right? Okay. So then the next row here is going to be our office equipment. Same thing here. We have accumulated depreciation for each one. So this does take a long time, all right? Because our goal here is to try to get our main accounts going. So accumulated depreciation, computer, printer, and then we also have accumulated depreciation for the register, all right? And those are all credit balances. So what is my credit for my computer? Sixty-one sixteen. Sixty-one sixteen. Right. What about my printer? Twelve sixty-three. And then lastly, what about my register? Twenty-one sixty-five. Twenty-one sixty-five. All right, same thing. We're going to go into our main account right here, which is my office equipment. So my office equipment is going to be this. Mm -hmm. All right. And what should be my total? Twenty-seven, sixty-seven. Eighty-four. All right, eighty-four. I got seventy-six. Okay. Yeah. Right, good. So now we have our total e office equipment. Now next thing we're going to do is our total equipment. So here, same thing. We're going to have to have accumulated depreciation for the grinder and for the brewer. Okay. So AQ. All right, so in this case, what was my accumulated depreciation for the brewer? For the brewer? So here I am in equipment. Here's AQ Brewer. 9617. 9617. And then lastly, my grinder. What is my accumulated depreciation for my grinder? $69.08. $69.08. So looking at my main account for equipment, all right, equals sum, or I'm sorry, equals my coffee brewer minus my accumulated depreciation plus my grinder minus my accumulated depreciation. And what do I get? I got 
good. Okay, so the next thing I have here is vehicles. Of course, there is an accumulated depreciation for the vehicles. Okay, for the truck. Acum depreciation truck. All right, and it's a credit for, let me see, for what amount? $257.67. Good. So my total vehicles should reflect as my total vehicle minus my depreciation. All right, so 31 Okay. And then, of course, my other main accounts here is a prepaid, right? We didn't make any changes to prepaid or my deposits or, yeah, no, actually, no, we did do Goodwill. So my prepaid is still 665417. My deposits is still 1700. So this one, I can go ahead and transfer this information right across because these are main accounts. Since they're the same, Right. Now the last one we have here, I mean not the yeah, the last one we have here for assets is going to be goodwill. We did make an adjustment to goodwill. All right. We had accumulated accumulated amortization. Amortization. goodwill and it was for eleven sixty seven. So therefore my goodwill, since it's already a main account, is going to reflect two eighty eight thirty three. Okay. So now we can move on to our um, regular, uh, our other liabilities. Okay, so liabilities. Our first main account is going to be accounts payable. Did we make any changes to accounts payable? Is it still five, uh, four, five, three, four, seventy? Okay, so that means as a main account, right? So I'm going to change all these um, values into the blue that I selected. All right, so here, let me see, where are my accounts? Payable is still going to be the same, right? What about my visa payable? Did I make any changes there? Same. It's the same. Is it the same? Yes. Mm hmm So here, oh, not negative. There we go. All right, and then what about this section here, which is my sales tax payable? So we'll get there when we come back to it. And then now we got to do our payroll tax liability. So here we had a few extra things that we added, payroll tax liabilities. We had a salaries and wages payable and a commissions payable. So we need to add that in here. So salaries. And commissions. All right. And because they are credit accounts. All right. So all of these should be included into your um, payroll tax. 
So first things first, how much was my uh, salaries and wages payable for? And then how much was my commissions payable? 271.78. Lastly, let's go ahead and go through it. What did my... Um, no changes in any of these. So um, we're going to add up all of our payroll liabilities accordingly. So here... I can go ahead and equal sum this because they're all under the same liabilities. Okay. So here we should have salaries, commissions. Um, then this one should be uh, uh, OA, SDI, um, HI, um, all of this, company FUDA, company SUDA, workers comp. Okay, those are all included. Okay, and what do you get? Seven nine one five four. Seven nine one five four. Right, that's the total of payroll um, tax liabilities that you owe. Okay. Next one is loans. Loans shouldn't have changed. Right. Let's go ahead and double. Actually, wait. Let's go back to sales tax payable. Sales tax payable. Sales tax payable. Has my sales tax payable changed? It, is, it has changed? It's no longer 2000? All right, it's the same. Well, crap. There you go. So equal this. So it's the same here. I don't know where that came from. Oh, wait. That was right. There you go. My um, payroll tax liabilities is $791.54. So the next one I have here is going to be loans. Loans. Has loans changed? I only have one loan and I haven't paid it off at all. So my loans has not changed. So here in the loans column, it should be this number, not this. This is already a, um, whatchamacallit, it's a sub-account. Okay. What about owner's equity? That stayed the same. We know that for a fact because we haven't touched equity yet. We still have to complete the closing process before our equity account changes. Okay. Same thing with the withdrawal. Remember, withdrawal is a main account. It's a contract main account. So in this case, we know that it needs to be. It, it needs to stay um, here at three thousand on the debit side. All right. So the next account that we have is our sales, all right, revenues. Did our revenues change at all? Let's confirm our first set and then we will know, all right? Did we make any changes to our sales regular coffee? Same. What about medium? Uh, I'm sales. Uh, Supreme coffee. They're all the same, right? So therefore, if they're all the same, then I'm gonna go ahead and let me clear all those out. So under sales, right? So I'm gonna add this entire column up under sales. So equal sum. All right, so this is sales for regular, supreme, the coffee mugs, large, medium, large, medium. Okay, 
And what is my total sales going to be? I got 30549 Good. All right. And, of course, with our um, sales discounts in sales returns and allowances, those are, are going to remain as uh, main accounts, okay, because those ones are contra accounts. So I'm going to keep them as is at um, $19, okay, so these are still going to be debits. All right, and they are main accounts, okay, main contra accounts. Delivery income is already its own um, thing. So is it still 30,000, is it still 300? Delivery income, Wait, this is interest income. Delivery income is 300, so it stays the same. So here it's already highlighted in blue, or I mean it's already written in blue. All right, so next is the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. Has our cost of goods sold changed? Let's see. We Yes, there is one thing that we need to add in here. All right, so here's the cost of goods sold for regular coffee. It's still $13.61. And then Supreme Coffee, it's still $14.41. However, we have a cost of goods sold for our coffee mugs all right and what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to insert more because I also have a cost of material okay so cost of goods sold coffee um cost of goods sold ceramic coffee mugs what's my total of the coffee mugs I sold. Eleven eighty three eighty four, bringing my total cost of goods sold to be $3,992.51. All right, good. Okay. Other accounts that we have included in here is now we have a main account called cost of materials. Cost of materials all right and we know that under that we have cost of materials for the large uh, for the medium cups we have the cost of materials for the large cups cost of materials for sugar and creamer so let me go ahead and type all of those in there so we have to add all of those up together as well com C-O-M, sugar, and lastly, C-O-M, creamer, all right? And let's go through down the list and tell me which one is in which one. So the medium coffee cups is? $286.70. Correct. And then what about my... Large cups. $351. What did you say? Three, five, one, six, three. Uh-huh. All right. And the sugar? 
Lynn, will you do me a favor? Excuse me, interjection. Can you move? Uh, can you mute Dalia? I can't hear. Talia, your mic is not muted. There you go. All right, so going back to Thank this. Mm-hmm. All right, can, you, can, uh, can everyone still see my screen? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, so where's my yeah. ledger? Okay. So, where did I leave off? Sugar. Sugar? You left off sugar for $43.20. $43.20. And my creamer is for? And the creamer is for uh, cost of materials is $359.26. Good. So, let's add that up. One more up. There you go. Okay, so 1040 79. All right, good. All right, so lastly, we have our operating expenses. All right, starting from the very top. I believe everything stayed the same except for a few accounts. Okay, so what about our advertising expense? It's the same, it's still 185. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over main account. What about my business expense? Oh, yeah, what about my business expense, sorry. Is it there? Hold on, this isn't my business expense. Oh, this is bank fees. Oh, I skipped one. All right, so I have bank fees. So I have to include that now. And how much were my bank fees? 835, which is also a main account, all right? What about my business expense? Mm -hmm. 1282.78, bringing that over. What about my freight expense? Zero. It's been zeroed out. What about my insurance expense? That should have stayed the same. Okay. Um, and then labor expense. Okay. All of those are the same as well. But here I got to sum them up because um, the main account is labor and my sub account is subcontractor plus my temporary. So what is this? 2142. Good. License and permit expense should stay the same. Say it again. You said loss on sale, disposal of assets, the same. Good. What about my payroll expenses? I actually changed some of these. So payroll. Oh, I also have office supplies expense. Insert office supplies expense. That's a main account. Okay, what's my office supplies expense for? 
70. There you go. So then my payroll expense, salaries and wages payable has increased. Okay, to how much? 884. What about my commissions? Or eleven ninety six, and then my payroll tax um, expense should stay the same. So, what is my total going to be here? Thirteen ninety three ninety four, and then. What about my purchase expense? Hold on, this is purchase returns. Okay, so yes, purchase expense is zeroed out. So purchase expense is zeroed out. So therefore it's zero. My purchase returns and allowances is also zero. I have to go over to the credit side and say this is zero, making this zero, okay. And then lastly, my rent is the same. All right, so add your columns up together and do I have equal amount of credits with debits? Yes. It says I have a discrepancy of seven hundred and fourteen dollars. Mm. Did you also get the same thing? No, I I got a correct. Is it nine? It's uh ninety nine 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 four eighty one. Okay. Shall we check the amount from the beginning, Lynn? Mm-hmm. One seventy nine, sixty three, mm -hmm. eighty, mm -hmm. sixty one eleven, sixty one eleven, one eighty ninety seven, mm -hmm. three eighty six twelve, mm -hmm. six six zero five eight, mm -hmm. one one nine three twenty two, mm -hmm. six five eight thirty seven, mm -hmm. five seven seven zero eight, mm -hmm. one eight three four eighty four. Mm -hmm. 378, 87, 45, 3, 42, 1996, mm -hmm. uh, 1979, mm -hmm. uh, there it's a mistake, it says 140, no, it, 1979, okay, uh, 1367, 39, mm -hmm. uh, 1441, 28, mm -hmm. 1183, 84, yes, 286, 70, 
Yes. Three fifty one sixty three. Mm -hmm. 23, 20, 29, 26, 185, 85, 375, 2000, 70, 884, uh, 4196, 9798, 1500, 7670. 7670? Yeah, bad expenses. Oh, you are right. I completely forgot about that. Yes. We did have bad debt so travel expenses uh utilities so bad debt expense amortization depreciation okay we have to include all of that thank you tennyson all right so insert insert all right so here we have after rent expense is going to be bad debt expense bad debt expense for 7660 7660 um, depreciation expense depreciation expense 625 91 6 okay 625 91 okay so 625 91 good and then amortizing and Expense is for eleven sixty seven. For eleven six seven. There you go. Nine 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 four eight one. There you go. Question. Yes. Uh, yes, it's because the formatting um, uh, for this one is because I need to for I I have to format it to be um, what is what is the format that I use? Uh, I think I used this one could be accounting, but I, if I do comma, actually, yeah, it's. If I change to this, it's still negative. I change to this, it's still negative. Let me see what the problem is. Is there because I pressed a negative in here? Yeah, it looks negative to me. That's right. There you go. Yeah. I must have pressed a negative in there at some point. Okay. So good. Thank you so much for that. File save. So here, our trial balance has finally been. balanced so here i have the black is all the accounts the blue is going to be my main account so this is what i'm going to use i'm going to use the blue numbers to proceed um uh so forth to go on and continue for the rest of the um the uh financial statement so here 994 um of course these are going to look different because there's sums right um but as long as you have the the total right here for the debits and the credits, as long as those match, you're okay there. Okay. So with that being said, now we're going to go ahead and proceed to, let me see what time is it real quick. So we'll take a break. Right now it's exactly 10 o'clock. Let's go ahead and take a 15 minute break. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and complete our financial statements okay so please be back no later than 10 16.